Reading and the Brain, Part 2, The Neurological Perspective. Understanding how our brain functions during the thinking process we call reading. Reading is creating meaning with print. Creating meaning is a thinking process. Note that knowledge is stored in the cortex of our brain. Everything we've all experienced, cognitive psychology calls these schemata, file folders in our head. Here's that little squiggle of jelly right up here, all uh, wrinkly and stuff. Thalamus cerebral cortex. The brain essentially is a memory machine, a predicting machine. In the act of reading, we use the knowledge stored right up there in our cortex to constantly reach out and predict the meaning of the words and sentences we are reading or we are about to read. Now, your brain is doing that right now as you are listening to me. You're not processing each individual phoneme, sound, or word. Your brain is reaching out, predicting what I'm about to say, using the knowledge stored there to understand my message. This is what we do with reading. This is what we do with uh, hearing, listening. This is what we do with all of reality. We make sense of what we encounter based on what's in our head. We don't use sense data only to come and create the picture. The picture or variations of the picture, the basic elements of the picture, is in our head. And we use sense data then to predict, confirm, reconfirm, or change. Now, in the process of reading, our brains use three cueing systems to provide clues as to what the word might be, sentence or idea might be. We don't... That's why we want to teach or provide instruction that develops all three of these. Semantics, meaning meaning, syntax, and graphophonemic. And we'll look at each one of these. So, words appear on the page. We don't just process using phonics, but we process them using all three of these cueing systems. We do not. We recognize words. We do not sound them out. Sounding out words is our last resort. Also, in the brain, now this is important, more information, this is what the latest brain imaging research has showed us, flows from the cortex down to the thalamus and senses, then from the senses, thalamus up. Implications you will see, this is the transactive model. More information, almost 10 times more, is flowing from our cortex down to our thalamus then is going from our senses, thalamus, to the cortex. As you are hearing me, more information, the circuits going down are much more active, there's much more of them, than the circuits going up. Words appearing on the page. That's very important. The, that, again, that tells us we use what's in our head. What's in our head is just as important, if not more, than what's on the page or what you hear in creating Meaning. Reading is a meaning-making process. The semantic cueing systems means we are using context clues. Semantics means meaning. This is the most efficient and effective way to recognize words because it uses the least amount of brain juice or thinking space and it gets us the most information. The monkey ate a, and we're kind of filling in the blanks, the monkey ate a b. And most of us know, without having to see all the words, but a nat uh, we know that's a banana. Syntactical or syntax uses the grammatical structure of the language to try to figure out what the word is as we are reading. And we're going to find out in the next video looking at eye movement that we only can process two or three, maybe four letters at a time, and we're using a lot of our peripheral vision and making sense of it. But anyway, grammar, sentence structure, word order, tense and plurality, prefix, nouns, verbs, function words, these all give us clues as to what the word might be so we don't have to process each individual letter. An example of this, if you would stop this, you could read that paragraph. There's nonsense words there. It doesn't mean much, but you could 
answer these questions, if you are so inclined, based just on the structure of the language. That's the best illustration I've seen of how we use syntactical clues. Syntax clues, word order, function words, tense and plurality, etc. These are all types of syntax clues that we use to create meaning. Here are a bunch of strategies, not all of them, but a bunch of strategies that I use to help develop the syntactical cueing system. Lots of writing, of course, reading, peer editing, sentence combining, morphemic analysis, writing, writing, writing. More on that later. The third one, the graphophonetic or phonological cueing system. Grapho, symbols, phono, sound. That is the least efficient of all the three cueing systems. And the problem with many remedial programs in reading is they focus just on the one, the graphophonics or phonological cueing system, and then let the other two atrophy. Phonics is important, but it's one of three cueing systems the brains use. So if we are going to teach all three parts of the brain instead of just one third of the brain, that's a simplification, but we have to develop each one. And we want to, I see a word spelled incorrectly, we want to promote, develop the most efficient ones, which are semantics and syntax.